Take your Bibles, if you would, and I'd like for you to turn to the book of Esther. Now, I am, uh, as they say, flying by the seat of my pants this morning. Uh, it is, it, it does occur when God sort of changes the message, or God, just before church time, or even right at the time, will add to the message or take it in a little bit different direction. And I had late, I, was, I spent some time yesterday, in fact, I probably spent, I don't, I don't want to say how many hours, studying one word in the Bible and making notes, sort of dividing up what the Bible said, different, put it into different categories. I like to do that. That just makes a good study, and that, that kind of helps me uh, think about what all the Bible is saying in relation to a particular idea. The Bible says, preach the word, and usually God gives me a word or a phrase in the Bible, and you know I like to do I just search it out through the whole Bible, and I just want to encourage you to do that as well. That's how I study. Somebody asked me, if, Mike, have you ever read the Bible all the way through? I'm pretty sure I have, just not all at once, okay? It all comes in pieces, but... Um, there's a concept in the Bible that I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't understand what drives some people. I don't understand what motivates them. I don't think this way. I don't act this way. Um, I am the head of my family, but anybody that knows me knows that I don't boss everybody around. I don't boss my wife around. I don't boss my kids around. I don't, I'm not mean to them most of the time. Um, you know, I'm the boss here of all the gals that work here. John and Michael, I'm in charge of them. I don't boss them around. I don't, I'm not mean to them. Uh, I don't threaten to fire them every day. Stuff like that. I've had to fire people. Boy, that kills me. I don't like doing it, but, but I don't, it's just not me. I'm the, I'm the pastor of the church. I'm the head of the church. Um, but again, I just, I'm not an administrator. I'm not somebody that, to take charge kind of guy and I'm going to lead this church and I, I just, it's not my nature. I'd rather get behind somebody and follow them. It's my nature. I'd rather, I'd rather look up to somebody and say, well, he's in charge. I'll, I'll do what he says. So I don't understand people who are addicted to what I call the drug of power. I don't understand it. I don't understand what they, how they think. I don't understand what, what they get out of it. I don't understand what motivates them. Politics, keep me out of politics. I am not, I mean, I'm good at telling the politicians what I think, but I'm not a politician. I would not be good in a state legislature, mayor of a city, governor, president, congressman. They put me on an executive board one time in a denomination, and I didn't like it because I thought, I think it's my responsibility to say stuff, and I did, and people didn't like it, so... I just, I just bowed out. I don't like it. But this, I was thinking about this all week. Thinking about the politics and the political scheming that's going on right now in Washington, D.C. And I want to tell you something. There are people in charge of this country, in charge of the whole, the federal government. There are people in charge of state governments. There are people in charge of local governments who are greedy, evil Power hungry devils and whores. They are. They will harlot themselves out. They will sell their souls for political gain and power. They seek, they forget that America is not a dictatorship. It is we the people. It is a constitutional representative republic. It is not even a democracy. 
It is a republic. We don't vote and say whoever votes the number of things, they get it. We elect congressmen. We elect electors to select a president. That's how come Hillary could win the popular vote, but Trump got the electorate. That's how it works. And they want to change it. Why do they want to change it? Because they, they didn't win. And they don't like it. And I guarantee you, I'm going to say something in this message that YouTube's going to strike two on me. I'm going to try not to. I'm almost out of strike one. I got to go till June and then they'll eliminate my strike. I said one thing in a sermon and they striked my channel, took, uh, took it down, I couldn't upload for a week. So I gotta be careful. That's censorship. That is power that they hold over us and they tell us you can say this but you can't say that. That's why Elon Musk had to buy Twitter. That's why he did it. That's why he said he spent, I don't have $55 billion to buy it. He bought them out and said, I'm in charge now. Not, not, the, not the, um, uh, the shareholders, because he turned it back to a private company. It's him now, which kind of scares me too. But he said, I'm going to give the voice back to the people. It's their voice. How else can you decide what's right and what's wrong unless you hear two opposing views? God put two trees in the midst of the garden, didn't he? Two opposing trees. One gives life, one would bring death. And God said, you choose. But we don't have a choice if you only give them one. That's why McDonald's came up with more than one sandwich. And why I sit behind people in a the line, they're going, would you hurry up? You know what's on the menu. Because they go, do you have a... Uh, never mind. There, but there are power whores in this country. They want to tell you what you can and cannot do. You must wear a mask. You must have this. You must have this vaccine. You must take this medicine. You must do this. You've got to show your papers. you got to do this. you got to do that. That is not what this country is about. It's not what Bible Christianity is about either. No man rules over you in your relationship with Jesus Christ. It's you, Christ the high priest, and God. I'm just the mouth, the big mouth. I want you to look up on the screen here. And God laid Esther on my heart, but I tell you what, I heard Mike Hudson preach this years ago, and I just about, man, I couldn't believe it. So I'm going to share with you some things that I've learned over the years and the symbolisms of the Bible. And I'm going to preach this. It's a very, very big concept. I've got, you wouldn't believe the notes I've got, but I know it's not for today. Rule, power and control, rule and authority. There is political power and control. People seek it out. There are politicians who mean to free people. They are statesmen. There are politicians who seek only to rule people. We must, as the people, force out the dictators and bring in the representatives of the people. Not representatives of big oil, big business, big pharmaceutical, big everything else. Not the representatives of the money or the banks, but the representatives of the people or we will lose our nation. We are turning the authority and the control and the power that God has given us in this country, we are turning it over. And I'm going to keep using this word. I hope it don't bother you. I'm going to keep using it. They are whores. They will sell anything they have to keep getting the drug of power. Political power and control. Financial power and control. If you remember, those who do not receive the mark of the beast will not be able to do what? Buy or sell. That is financial power and control. It is big banks buying out all the small banks. It is big media companies buying out all the TV stations and radio stations. It is the big publishing companies. It is the big news outlets who are the, who, 
But it is CNN saying, we're the ones who have the integrity. We tell the truth. And I don't believe a word they say. Financial power and control. Control over money. Control over monetary issues. Mind control. And if you don't believe in that, you have... You Mind control. You know, if I say something to you about 18, 20 times, you'll start believing it. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what it is. They know that if they keep reinforcing a narrative, that eventually people buy into it. It's a form of mind control. It is telling you, you are not capable of thinking thoughts on your own we will tell you what to think so now we have this term thought police to where up in Canada if I was a preacher up in Canada I would not be able to say sodomites homosexuals are going to hell sodomy is a sin I would not be able to say that they've clamped down on the preachers mouths telling them what they can and cannot say because what the Bible tells us to say is dangerous to them. See, let me tell you what drives this craving for power. It is fear. Fear of what? Fear of free people. That they cannot control. When the... Uh, the Sanhedrin, which was the, uh, the ruling court in Israel at the time of Christ, time of the disciples in the early church. When the Sanhedrin rounded up Peter and, and uh, John and asked them what, what they were preaching, whose name they were preaching, and they said, Jesus, we're preaching the gospel of salvation. They met and they said, we, we can't have this, guys. This is take what why was why were they afraid of these two men? Two men. What were they afraid of? They were afraid that they were going to lose their, it's on the list here, ecclesiastical power over them. And let me tell you, I'm kind of moving to the bottom of the list very fast here, but let me tell you, the greatest power on earth is not financial or political power, it's religious power. What drives 1.5 billion Muslims to act and do what they do. Religious power. Why, why do the Ayatollahs reign in Iran? Why do these Muslim extremists, the Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood, why did they take over Egypt? Why did they take over Libya? Why, why did our country let them? Why did they take over? It's to enforce religious power. And do you think those Imams in those countries are all pious men who have the people and their benefit and Allah as, as their primary goal? No! It's power. They're getting rich, they're getting powerful, and they seek to get richer and more powerful. Yasser Arafat, who remembers him? He was a shakedown artist. He was a con man. He went around threatening war every day that he was going to drive the Israelis into the Mediterranean Sea if he didn't get his way. And nations all over the world fundled millions and millions of dollars to him. That man was a wealthy man. Where did he get all that money? He conned all these nations into believing he was going to kill all the Jews. Religious power. Physical, physiological control. You don't have a say over what goes on in your own body. You don't have a right to turn down medicine. You don't have a right to say no to a vaccine. You don't have a right to, um, to breathe. You don't have a right to deny something that your insurance company says you must do. Or you'll lose your coverage. And let me tell you, it's only going to get worse. Medicines are becoming more and more invasive to the human soul. Subtle, subliminal control. Behind the scenes influence. 
It's not Joe. I don't fear Joe Biden. I fear the people who are writing a script for him. Because that guy's not capable of writing one himself. How did that guy... I, strike two, strike two. Information, control, and power. Controlling what you... Now, you guys, listen to me. You say, yeah, that, I only go to the right-wing news. You think that's all true? You don't think there's power whores on the, on the right that want to influence you and your thinking? They do, it for, they do it for website hits. They do it for video hits. They do it for the money, the ad revenue they get. All, all that has to happen for one website is one of their stories to go viral. And they cash in big time because they got ads all over their place. Information, control, and power, and then ecclesiastical power. You have a great high priest. There's, that's, why God, that's why God did this. God did this. God ordained that there was going to be one mediator between God and men, and it's not the Pope. And it's not Mary. It's not Billy Graham. It's not Mike Hoggard. It is Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Anybody that tells you, you better, tell, you better do what our church tells you to do. You better live by our rules. Just like those Amish and Mennonite communities I mentioned, that bishop tells him. And, and it, believe it or not, it comes down to the suspenders that the men wear. If they, if some communities, there's suspenders are crossed in the back. And some, they're not. And if you wear cross suspenders in a non-cross suspender Amish community, you will be forced out. It's that kind of pickiness. Telling you what you can and cannot believe. You have a Bible. You have the final authority on every subject and every issue that you will ever face in life right here. You have just as much right. See, that's why I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in the Second Amendment of Christianity. The right of the pew people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed in this church ever. You don't have to get it from me. Read it yourself. Let God say it to you directly. Amen. Now, let me get to the scripture. I want to illustrate this for you in Esther. Now, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to read the whole book of Esther. And the verses that I have up on the screen for time's sake, I'm going to try to move through those. But I want you to grasp, I want you to read this book today. I want you to read Esther. And what I want you to do is I want you to follow the ring. I want you to follow the ring. A couple of Sundays ago, this ring is a symbol that testifies to the biblical fact that my body does not belong solely to me. Who does it belong to? Sweetie Pie. She likewise is wearing a ring that signifies the biblical idea that her body does not belong solely to her. It also belongs to me. That's, that's, I just quoted scripture. It is a symbol of authority. In the, in the king's ring, we covered this in Sunday school a while back, the king would wear a ring that had a special signet on it. Some sort of design that was exclusively for the king. Now, if anybody had been found with anything that matched the king's seal, they'd be killed. Because what are they trying to do with it? Trying to, what, what happens when they counterfeit money? You're going to prison for a long time for that. Okay? See? Money power. But the king would wear a seal, a signet on his ring. And what you're going to see in the book of Esther, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you the characters. And you're going to look at your life differently, I hope, than you ever have before. You're going to follow the ring. Now, the characters in the book of Esther are, of course, Esther, who the book is named after. Esther is your soul. Where do you want your soul to spend eternity? 
You got two choices. Cheeseburger or hamburger? Heaven or hell? Depends on if you like cheese or not. Heaven or hell? That's it. No purgatory. That's made up. That is another ecclesiastical power game. It, watch this. Purgatory was designed for the Catholic Church to hold power over you even after you're dead. They tell your loved ones, he's not in heaven yet. We still have to say some masses for him and they're going to cost about 20 grand a piece. You think I'm lying? Now Esther is your soul. Esther is the Jewish woman. Ahasuerus is the king. He is your flesh. I want you to understand that. Ahasuerus is your flesh that Esther is married to, your soul. Romans 7 illustrates this. What? Know ye not that a woman that hath an husband is bound by the law to that husband as long as that husband liveth? She's only free when the husband dies. That's your soul. Okay? Then she's free to marry another. And that other one is Jesus Christ. He's the bridegroom, we're the bride. Make sense? Ahasuerus is your flesh. Haman, in this illustration, is the devil. The tempter, the deceiver. And he hates Esther. He hates her. Hates all of her people. All of her people are who? Jews. They are the chosen people of God. Mordecai is Christ. I'm going to show you that. Follow the ring. In Esther chapter 3 verse 8. Haman, he's the devil. He said unto king Ahasuerus, your flesh... There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it Who is he talking about? The Jews. Why is Haman so intent on destroying the Jews? Let me tell you why. Because Haman, the king put him up on high. And Haman demanded that when everybody saw him, they had to bow down to him because he was some big hotshot. Guess who doesn't bow down to Haman? Mordecai. Jesus stood before Satan in the wilderness and Satan said, if you'll worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms. And Jesus said, I'm not worshiping you. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only. Somebody say amen. Now, I may preach this and get more excited than you will. But I love this kind of stuff. It makes everything in the Bible just click. Haman hates the soul of man which is reserved unto God. And he wants him to say, if it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. Here's what happens. When a lost person lives their life in sin, disobedience to God, they drag their, their flesh, drags their soul to hell. For eternity. And you're not getting out. That is your flesh despising your own soul. Turning away from what you could have in eternity. With God in heaven forever. But you love sin and the flesh so much. That you're going to give authority over to the devil in your life. You're going to do everything the devil tells you to do. And don't tell me you don't. Ephesians chapter 2 says... Calls the devil the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's you today if you're lost. He said, I want them destroyed. I'll pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. Watch this. The king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. He said, Haman, write up whatever law you want. And put my seal of approval on it. It'll be just as if I had said it myself. You, in a lost condition, have sold your soul to the devil. You say, oh, I never made a deal with the devil that way. You were born into it. You were born into it. Eve and Adam, our parents sold us into bondage with their disobedience to God. We're born into sin. 
born into slavery, born into servitude to do whatever the devil told us to do. Brother Ron Dagonia, if he ever told you his testimony, he sat in a jail cell one night and he said, the devil jumped on me and said, Ron, I can make you do whatever I want you to do. And he knew he was right. God had called that man to preach same age I was, 16 years old. But he turned it down for most of his life. Now, look in verse 12. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province, according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language, in the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. You just sealed your doom. Sealed your doom. Haman, the devil, is going to have all the Jews, all the souls of man destroyed. That's his goal. And the flesh of mankind has given the devil that power and authority. I mean, think of Haman. Why does he demand everybody bow to him? I don't understand that thinking. But apparently, he likes it more than he likes romance and drugs and whiskey. It's the drug of power that he's addicted to. And even though he's got thousands of people bowing down to him, when he sees one that won't, he says, I'll kill him. So who sold Jesus to the cross? The devil himself. This is starting to make sense. Now watch. Verse 14. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people that they should be ready against that day. The post went out being hastened by the king's commandment and the decree was given in Shushan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city Shushan was, look at that word, perplexed. When you are in a lost condition and have your flesh has given Satan power and control over you, you will never find peace. You will never be happy. You will never find joy. You might, you might be like Haman and the king. You might sit down and have a bunch of drinks and say, Woo! Let's party! You will never be satisfied. You name somebody, you name somebody in Hollywood that sees themselves as being satisfied doesn't exist. That's why you see some actors and then you don't see them ever again. You know why? They said, mm -mm, I ain't doing it. It ain't there. They lived that life and they're going, I'm not going to do that again. The city was perplexed. Your family won't be right. Your marriage won't be right. Your children won't be right. Your relationships, everything in your life will be utter confusion and perplexity. I'm going to show you the difference that following the ring makes. Look at chapter 6. While I do this in private. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear that, did you? Okay. Now watch this. I like this. To give you the background, Ahasuerus is the king. He's your flesh. Ahasuerus found out that two of his servants were going to try to kill him. Mordecai, Esther's uncle, right? Mordecai the Jew, Esther's uncle, found out about it and reported it and they took the two servants of the king and hung them for treason. Mordecai, one night, he can't sleep. So he goes going through the, the government scrolls of what's been happening in town. And he reads the story of how two of his servants were going to kill him. And Mordecai turned them in and saved his life. Who's Mordecai? Christ said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly see the devil is always about death Christ is always about life 
So, he read the story of Mordecai. So, in verse 6 of chapter 6, So Haman came in, and the king said to him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now, Haman thought what? He's talking about me. Now, Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to do honor more than myself? And Haman answered the king, For the man, Oh, he doesn't know what he's doing, does he? Satan, Brother George, I've been waiting to preach to you for months. Satan didn't know that by hanging Jesus on the cross, he would be lifted up so that all men would come unto him. Somebody say amen. He didn't know what he was doing. He was sealing his own doom. Idiot. Devil, stupid, ain't he? Oh, let the royal, verse 8, let the royal pair be brought which the king useth to wear, the horse that the king rideth on. Read Revelation chapter 19, Jesus come down, riding on trigger, amen? High whole silver. Uh, and the crown royal, which is, that's not whiskey, by the way. Roy gets that joke. If he'd wake up. The crown royal which is set upon his head and let his apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes that they may array the man with all whom the king delighteth to honor and bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Verse 10, Then the king said to Haman, Make haste and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said and do even so to Mordecai the Jew. Dong! Do you know why? Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Boy, this is good. Isn't it? Can I quit now? Y'all ready to go home? It's 12. Who went? <clears throat> Oh, make haste and do it to Mordecai the Jew that sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. And Haman's just going, I'm an idiot. So now watch this. The city's still perplexed. The Jews, Esther, the soul of man, your soul, your flesh has sold you out. Your soul, which is your inner being, the one, your flesh, when you die, you're, you're going back to the dirt. And God's going to burn this whole thing up anyway. It's not your flesh that goes to heaven or hell. It's your soul. So in chapter 7 of verse 3, Esther, your soul, the queen, answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. When the Holy Spirit begins to work on you, the Holy Spirit does not talk to your flesh. He talks to your soul. And the Holy Ghost of God begins quoting Bible verses to you. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And your soul then decides one day, uh, flesh, me and you's going to have a talk. And I'm going to fast, and I'm going to cut you off for a while, while I go meet Jesus and seek life. So, verse 4, For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed and be slain to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he? Now, Haman is sitting right there next to her. She, Mordecai, see, Mordecai is Christ. Mordecai went to Esther before this and said, Do you think that just because you're the queen that you will be spared? You're a Jew. When the king finds out, according to his seal, you will have to hang with the rest of us. If you think you're going to make it without somebody saving you, you're just as, just as ignorant as the devil is. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he? Where is he? That durst presume in his heart to do so. And Esther said, The adversary. Look at that word. Who's your adversary? Satan. 
The adversary and the enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid. That's King James language for he lost his bowels. Right there in front of the king. He was afraid before the king and the queen. If you've read this story already, Ahasuerus gets so mad he has to go out on the porch and cool off. Meanwhile, Haman crawls over to Esther and he's like, she's like reclining on a couch and he's like over and he said, Oh, please, oh, please. And the king comes in, finds Haman laying on Esther. He said, what? You're going to defile the queen right in front of me? Boy, he was mad then. You see, I'm not much of a fighter. But you get me good and mad enough, I'll stand up. Amen? When at times in my life I realize that Satan had way too much power, I stood up and I said, I've had enough. When you live the life of sin and you find out that all your conquests and all your sins and all the things that you have attained in this life have brought you nothing but dissatisfaction, perplexity, grief, You'll stand up and say, I want something better. I don't. This lady that wrote me the email this morning. She said these words. I don't want to die. Now, I'll be honest with you. Eternal life sounds pretty good on most days. But God is putting something in us that continues to live on. Now, watch this. So, Ahasuerus has found out Haman's evil plan. Right? Watch what happens. On that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman the Jews' enemy unto Esther the queen. Watch this. In Revelation 12, Satan and a third of the angels are cast out of heaven. Where are we going? I'm going to live in their place. We're going to live in heaven where the devil and the angels used to live. They're getting kicked out. We're moving in. We might have to clean the place up a little bit. That'd be all right. Amen. Watch verse 2. No, wait, wait a minute. I've got to finish this. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring. Watch the ring now. Who's Mordecai? It's Christ. Because he's riding a horse on high, which he had taken from Haman and gave it unto Mordecai. See, this is you. Watch this. This is you turning your power and authority over to Jesus Christ now. From now on, Jesus, you rule. You tell me what to do. You be the Lord of my life. And I will follow you, and whatever you seal is done. Whatever you say is as is, is good as gospel, and I'll follow it all the days of my life. Give your authority to the right one. Which he had taken from Haman, gave it unto Mordecai, and Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. In verse 15, And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city, watch this. Now look at the city of Shushan. Whereas before they were perplexed, now what are they? They rejoiced and was glad. Wouldn't it be great if in the 2024 20, thing that we're going to do in November... That we elected Jesus. And he came. And he put down all principalities and powers. And he ruled over this whole world. Do you think there would be rejoicing for a thousand years? Amen. By the way, where do you think Adolf Hitler got the idea of a thousand year reign? He's an antichrist. And who did Hitler hate? 
Hmm. Follow the ring, people. And many of the people of the land, oh, watch that, i got to finish reading it. And in every province, every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land, watch this, what'd they do, Melissa? They became Jews. We are the Israel of God. As Gentiles, by faith, children of Abraham. Boy, if I just had me some more black people in here, we could really have fun in church. I preach like this in Kenya. Boy, they dance. Woo Amen. This looks silly for me doing it. For fear of the Jews fell upon them. Your Bible is right. Your Bible is right. Now, I'm not going to preach. I got a lot to preach. I'm going to stop right here. Do you understand now the power? The authority, the control. You give it over to the devil. You let him rule over you. You let him tell, him, tell you what to do. And you wonder why your life is such a mess. You wonder why nothing, there's, there's no joy, there's no happiness in your life. There's none in your family. Work is, work is just something you got to do to earn money. You find no joy in it at all. Greatest, one of the greatest things God taught me as a young man, God wouldn't let me preach a church until I had worked a job. And I remember the first house I ever helped paint, and I looked back on it, and I went, that looks better than what it did when I came in here. And at the end of the day, I had a satisfaction I had not had before. The satisfaction of working a man's job and doing a man's work and doing the best that he could and was happy about it. That's when I started making more money. I'm just telling you, you live for the devil, you're going to pay the devil. You live for Jesus, it's free. There's no cost. It's all been paid. It's all been taken care of. Follow the ring. Who are you going to give your power and your authority to? Who are you going to give your life over to? Who are you going to serve? Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Bow your heads.